Hey, good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. I hope that you're having a blast at home, enjoying time with your family. And uh, we wanted to just give you a little message here this morning before, maybe you'll even watch it tonight, but uh, I had something on my heart for this Christmas day. And again, at Greater Life, we just want you to be with your family today, as well as next Sunday, uh, we're going to be online only. So don't show up here, okay? But uh, we'll be online right at 1030 and uh, hope to see you tuning in. And again, Merry Christmas. I hope you got everything that you hoped for and, and are having an amazing day so far. I, I want to talk to you just about the importance of the birth of Christ. And I hope this blesses you this morning, those of you that are tuning in. I hope that it's something that really gets down in your heart and helps you understand a little bit more uh, about why Jesus came to the earth and was born. Like, why did he have to be born? So let me share some things with you today because Christmas is the day that all history actually depends on. And if you were in school, you probably remember you learned B.C. and A.D. Now, they've changed that quite a bit because they're trying to take God out of just about everything. But B.C. and A.D., it divides time between before Christ, right? And then it's not after death. It's actually Anno Domini, which is the year of our Lord. And Jesus' birth actually and his death actually splits time in half, that's how important it is to follow the timeline. The year of the Lord actually changes everything. And, and whether you believe in Jesus or not, if you're watching this morning, maybe for the first time, he actually split time. No other, no other God, no other human being in our history uh, has ever been known to split time in half. So we live in A.D. time, the year of our Lord, but many live in A.D. time with a B.C., a before Christ mindset. So question for you this morning is what changed when Jesus came to the earth? What is it that changed? And we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this verse, but if you haven't, uh, keep up with me. It says, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid. Why? And he lists three things here. Well, really two, and who it's for. He says, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for who? All people. And if you're an all people, we're all. This is for everyone. And so no matter what you've done in your past, because that's where most people struggle, or what has happened to you, or how, you're, how dark your life may seem. Listen, Jesus brought good news, but what is that good news that he's talking about here? Well, if you jump down to verse 11 in Luke 2, it says this, The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So at this announcement, everything changed completely at this announcement as time was divided into two. I want to talk to you about three major changes this morning on this Christmas from the birth of Christ. Number one, if you're taking notes or listening in this morning, um, and if you're watching, please uh, type in where you're uh, watching from this morning. We'd love to know. But uh, this one here, before Christ, there was religion. That's number one that I want to get into your hearts today. Before Christ, B.C., there was religion. Well, what's religion? Because a lot of people have a lot of different thoughts about what religion is. Because I even get asked often, hey, are you religious? And I say, no, I'm not religious. Well, why would I answer that way? This is what religion is. It's man's way to God. Like, if I can earn God's love, if I can earn God's favor, and we can never do that according to Scripture. That's what religion is. Man's way to God. It's closing the gap between my sin and God's righteousness. It's trying to, in other words, it's trying to, to please God with rituals. Uh, look at me. God, and it puts the emphasis on us instead of Him. That's religion. And I've said it before if you come to this church. Religion will give you 10,000 steps. And once you try to attain all those, religion will give you 10,000 more. It's nothing that we can ever attain. And that's why we need something other than religion, and that's where I'm going to get this morning. Religion also is this, it's trying to be a good person. People say, well, why do I need to go to church? I'm a good person. Well, how good is good? Because everybody has a different opinion of good. The Bible tells us that only one is good, and his name is Jesus. 
Maybe you think attending church will get you to heaven. You know, if I just go to church, then I'll go to heaven. Well, a lot of people can attend church, but not really hear and, and, and dive in and be a doer of the Word of God. Or maybe for some of you, you have a background like this, praying the rosary or, or memorizing the Bible, then that'll get me. No, these are all religious things. They're, these are nothing, the, the things that I listed here, these are nothing but rules in order for me or you to please God. And that's not what the Scripture tells us. However, when Jesus arrived on the scene, it was not about religion. It was about relationship. That's what it was about. Relationship with who? Well, the Bible tells us it's a relationship with God. Jesus bridged that gap for you and for me, a relationship with God. And this is what changed everything because this did not exist before. Jesus did not come here for religious people. He didn't come to the earth for religion or religious people. People thought they were perfect because no one's perfect, including me. (laughs) None of us are perfect. Jesus did not come here for religious people. He came to the earth for lost people. Why? To show them who God is. That's why he came to the earth as a man. He's like, I'm going to show you who God is so that you can know him uh, intimately, know him closer than just maybe some mystic being. But the religious people, they often got mad because Jesus spent time with those that were far from God. And they didn't like that. And they didn't understand what truly Jesus came to do in the earth. It reminds me of a, a story a little bit. Um, some of you probably know Tim Allen. He's uh, in the Santa Claus movies, and, uh, and he believes in God, and he loves Jesus, which is really cool. But I don't know if you know that Tim Allen is actually really good friends with Tom Hanks, and you all know who Tom Hanks is. Great actor, right? Well, <laughs> these two, Tim Allen and Tom Hanks, they have completely different mindsets and beliefs, yet they're very good friends. They're very close. Matter of fact, An interview that I saw said that they respect each other's views and beliefs very much. My point in this is that Tim Allen is in Tom Hanks' life. Why? To be a blessing and to plant the love of God in Tom's heart. Not to push him away because he has a a different thought or a different mindset, a different attitude, a different opinion. Everybody does. And that's not a reason for us to push people away because Jesus actually did the same thing. He spent time, he sought out who? People that are far from God, not people that were close to God. People that were far from God. And so if Jesus sought those people out, guess what? So should you and so should I. And Jesus talked about relationship often. The only time he brought up religion is when he was coming against these religious leaders telling them they were wrong in what they were doing. All the other times was always about relationship. That's what God wants with you today. Listen to John 17, 3. It says this, now this is eternal life. So Jesus is about to give us a a definition of what eternal life is. Look at this. It says that they know you. Well, the only way you know somebody is through relationship. He's talking about that here. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He's talking about knowing. In knowing someone is relationship. And listen, there are a lot of people who know about God, but they do not know God through a relationship. They don't know Him intimately. And the only way you can do that is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that He is your Lord and that He is your Savior. Listen to Matthew 7, 22 and 23. It says this, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, do do, do we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And actually they did. Verse 23, then he, he goes on to say, then I will tell them plainly. Here it is again, relationship. He said, I never knew you. Why would he say that? Because they chase after something, but it was everything. It was religion. It was everything but a relationship with God through Jesus. So, when Jesus was born, everything changed. Everything. We didn't have to try and live up to the law of religion anymore. Why? Jesus fulfilled the law for us. Number two, before Christ, people would often wonder. They would wonder this, they would wonder that. How how do I do this? How do I do that? What's my relationship with God? Do I have one with God? Before Christ, people would often wonder. Well, wonder about what? Like, like, have I done enough? 
They wondered where they stood with God and, and how their relationship was. They didn't really know. They went by what the law and the word said in the Old Testament, but they didn't have an opportunity to have this personal relationship like we all do now with Jesus. But because of Christ, listen, we don't have to wonder any longer. Romans 8.16 says this, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that what? We are God's children. The Spirit of God is testifying with our spirit saying, Hey, you surrender your life to Jesus. Make Him your Lord and your Savior. Guess what? You're God's child. You don't have to wonder anymore. You don't have to think anything else anymore. You're His child. So we no longer have to wonder, but we can know that we're a child of God. What does that mean? This means that we can have peace in our life about that. We can have assurance in our life about that. Why? Because we've been adopted into God's family and our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. How amazing is that? And number three, lastly, is this. Before Christ, to experience God, you had to go to God. In the Old Testament, God dwelled in a temple, so you would go there to find God and, and who, who He was and what He was about. But when Jesus was born, the Bible says that God came to be, listen, no longer to God, but God came to be with us. That's Emmanuel, God with us, that we've been talking about for the last month here at Greater Life. The Bible says that believers now, so if you've given your life to Jesus, He's your Lord and Savior, you know, we come to church because the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling together. We come here to serve. We come here to give. And we come here to learn so that we can go out and bless others. But listen, the Bible says that believers are the temple of the Holy Spirit. What's that mean? God now, when you give your life to Jesus, now dwells in you and he dwells in me. That's an amazing thing. Listen to Matthew 1.23. It says this, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So I want to encourage you on this Christmas day. God is with you. No matter what you've been through, maybe you're ready, like me, to put 2022 behind you and get into the next year. And listen, not that the next year is going to be any better or any worse or anything like that, but maybe this one's been a rough one for you like it has been for a lot of people, whatever it is, whatever you're going through, I want you to know that God is with you. He cares for you. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. So a couple things here as I end this is when we start to fall, Jesus is there to catch us. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. So when you sin, Jesus is there to be your savior. There's no perfect people. They don't exist. Matter of fact, the Bible says while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us when we were sinners. So now it's not as much about behavior modification, that's religion, as much as it is about heart transformation. That's a living relationship with a living God. This is the good news. And it's great joy to all people. An event that changed everything is the birth of Christ. Do me a favor right now at home, right where you're at. If you could just settle for one second. Maybe you have family with you watching this morning or the kids. And uh, I, I want to give you an opportunity, if you haven't already in your life, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you go ahead and close your eyes, bow your heads right now uh, in your homes. You, put, don't, you can stop cleaning up that wrapping paper right now. Just give it a moment. Uh, put the cookie plate down maybe for a second. And, and make sure that you know that when you leave this earth, that you will spend eternal life. Remember, Jesus said what eternal life was. It's knowing Him. Do you know Jesus today as your personal Lord and Savior? That He died for you. He took a cross for you and for me. He bore every sin that could be ever committed. You might be thinking, okay, Pastor Keith, how could, I, how could God forgive me of A, B, and C? That's how amazing the blood of Christ is. So right where you're at now, with every head uh, bowed and every eye closed. And I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer in just a moment. And if, if you pray that prayer, please let us know, and I'll give you information about that in just one second. But pre, please let us know that you prayed that prayer for the first time. You could even put it in the post here this morning, or you could contact the church and let us know as well. We want to get a Bible into your hands, and we want to pray with you and ask, or answer, I'm sorry, any questions that you might have. So right where you're at, 
If you feel a tugging on your heart right now, I want you to just pray this prayer with me. As a matter of fact, everybody who's watching right now, they're going to pray it with you. That's how much they love you and believe in you and, and, and are believing with you. Pray this prayer right now. Say this. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me brand new. I believe you're the Son of God, that you died for me. You were buried for me. And you rose again just for me. I repent of all my sin. And I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you rededicated your life today to Jesus, please let us know. Again, we'd love to get a Bible into your hands and would love to just be a part of your walk or your new walk with God uh, this day. Before I go, number one, Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day. Again, today we're online only. Next week we're online only. I want to give you an opportunity right now. Go to our website, yourgreaterlife.net. Yourgreaterlife.net. If you click on the tab uh, at the top and click on giving, and if you'd like to sow into this ministry uh, as we close out 2022, or if you're a regular tither and a giver, you can go there right now and set up an easy way to give online. That's what probably 90% of our church does already. Uh, if you have any issues with that, you could take out your phone right now as well. You can text the word GREATER to 97000. Text the word GREATER to 97000. A link will be sent to you. Click on that link. And in there, there's ways to give, serve. Let us know you gave your life to Jesus, whatever it might be. But let's finish this year strong. Let's give. Why? For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave us His Son. And so let's be givers. Let's finish out 2022 strong. So we encourage you, go to our website, yourgreaterlife.net. Give today, and thank you so much for giving. And uh, if you're not able to do that, uh, you can always send in uh, your tithes, your offerings, your, your love gifts to the church. We're located at 1900 Canfield Road in Youngstown, Ohio. It's 44511. You can send them there as well. And make sure you put all your information in there so we can send you a receipt for giving. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Merry Christmas. I pray health over you and your families. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you back here in the new year. God bless you.